This episode of The Breakfast Dish is brought to you by Pod Power. With Pod Power, our sponsors are making it possible for us to amplify the voices of Albertans and Alberta podcasters. This episode, Edmonton Community Foundation is helping us give a Pod Power shout out to High Level Hip Hop. CJSR presents High Level Hip Hop. It's a deep dive into Edmonton's hip hop scene and the artists helping shape it. And the show takes a unique approach to introducing listeners to the OGs and the young bloods of Edmonton hip hop scene. I, I shouldn't be saying that, but I am. It's scripted. The show is aimed at those who love local music, but might not have had a chance to fall in love with the city's surprisingly diverse hip hop scene. Each episode features an interview with a local artist, plus a fresh track they recorded at CJSR. Check out episode with Arlo Maverick, Please Be Nice, and more throughout the season. High Level Hip Hop is produced by CJSR, Edmonton's campus and community radio station. Download it wherever you find podcasts and at highlevelhiphop.transistor.fm. Listen, I nail young bloods, but someone needs to teach me how to say OGs. What is an OG? I think it means original gangster. <gasps> oh, that's me. Tell me your dreams over bacon and We'll share a laugh and a story and even a wish on the breakfast dish. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 63 of The Breakfast Dish, the one that I tend to introduce a lot because just at the moment of introduction, like when recording starts, my son, Griffin Cork, always takes a sip of coffee. So it's That's this, intentional. Sorry, that, that is intentional. It's intentional yeah. so that I'll do the intro? Well, we just, you know, we've talked about introing. I introed a lot of season one, you did season two, and then we never really chatted about season three. So I'm kind of like forcing your hand as it were, kind of uh, counting cards at the casino. Great. Okay. So it's elder <laughs> abuse of your mother is what you're saying. It, okay, so here, right here, live on the podcast right now, podcast catting, you're calling yourself an elder. Is that what we're going to go with? Eating your own words there. Exactly. Speaking of elders, our, we were talking and our guests went, okay, yeah, just two shakes. And I went, oh, like hardly anyone says that anymore. It's a it's an oldie timey phrase, but I love it. And I love when oldie timey phrases come out of people younger than me. <laughs> Okay, so so far, so, so far, you called yourself an elder on this podcast, and you suggest that our guest has elder sensibilities. No, Karen, what's you gotta you gotta save this intro. You have to tell us what we do on the breakfast dish. Okay, first of all, on the breakfast dish, people with wisdom, a little silver in their hair, talk about arts happening in and no. around Alberta. <laughs> With their son. So it's me, Karen Johnson Diamond, and my son, Griffin Cork. And uh, all the gray in my hair is probably because of him. But we have, I have a life experience <laughs> okay. that I'm bringing to this podcast, and you have very little. So I'm coaching you along. And our guest. Very little. I'm a, I'm a quarter of the way through my life. That guy's got to count for something. And that's if I reach the max, you know? Who knows? Oh I could be gosh. halfway through. We don't know. Can we not talk about that? Mommy's yeah. going to cry. You said. <laughs> Anyway, we have, uh, I, I would guess, and I don't know, we'll have, maybe we'll have to confirm this if she cares to share with us, uh, a guest that is between my age and your age, but I'm not <laughs> positive. You two may be more similar in age than I think. We are welcoming Canadian country music artist, Crystal McGrath. Crystal, welcome to The Breakfast Dish. Hello. Thanks for having me, guys. Bringing some joy to the morning. Yay. Yes, we, we do find it's a good way to start the day, unless the, the podcast hosts talk about silver in our hair. Hey, you know what? Fine. Silver in the hair is trendy. People are paying to do that. So that is that's true. <laughs> true. That is so true. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, important. I think that we just talk about how much older I am, so that if I say the wrong things, it's <laughs> never mind. Cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't be cutting that part. Out. It's excusable. And you're canceled. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Crystal, how exciting. We were so glad to hear that you have a brand new single. So uh, I have tastes in country music. I'm not a big country music follower. So you get to talk. If I, if you talk, you just talk about your single, talk about your. Well, I, I want to jump in with with something that I always love out of uh, uh, these kinds of singles, all of these things. And it's the moment where it's it's kind of a. I think I think it was the first chorus in all of these things, but it's the moment where all of the instruments kick in, and it's like the equivalent of like a I don't know like a drop of a song, and man, it gets me every time. <laughs> it was really well done in this oh, song. Oh, cool! Yeah, well, this is probably one of the 
favorite songs I've ever created because it's got so much of that personal vulnerability that I love talking about. I'm a huge advocate for self-love and making sure you love yourself first before accepting love into your life. I think that's the number one thing as humans on this journey is to love yourself first because that's really just the foundation for everything we do in life, right? And this song was kind of stemmed from that idea. And for me, I'm a person that I have sticky fingers and I have my hands on tons of different pots. And first and foremost, I'm a country artist, but I also own a fitness company and a digital marketing agency and a music school and all sorts of other fun things. I have a passion pop project called Boy and Girl. We have a foundation called Right to Dream and on and on. So I do a lot of different things. And that's kind of... Wow where the idea of the song came from is, you know, you can do multiple things. I've had so many people say to me in my life, just focus on one thing, just focus on one thing. But that's not how I excel. I excel when I'm doing lots of different things. And, um, the acceptance of that is, is something that sometimes people don't understand and that's okay. That's totally fine. (laughs) But, uh, that was kind of the, the pot of the song. And then it turned into a love song ultimately. And, the love song with yourself and the love song with the people in your life and your partner and ultimately finding somebody that accepts you for all the things that you are. I, I like the, the – or at least the general message that I picked up out of this single is is kind of being an all-encompassing kind of being, like being very multifaceted and complex where – I think there's a lot of conversation, especially right now, around like identity and finding your purpose. I think everybody thought about that during the pandemic. I think that that got to a lot of people's brains. And I think accepting that there are, yeah, a a few kind of pots in your kitchen, as you say, that can make you up as a person is 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 really lovely. Yeah. And it's about being, you know, being happy and being sad and being vulnerable and being strong and encompassing all the different emotions that we are as humans. And I think sometimes, especially with social media, we are programmed to say, everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's Mm -hmm. great. (laughs) You know, when really in the inside, maybe you're battling with, with different emotions and beliefs and different things. For me, my struggle was always, I am not good enough, which is crazy because I am good enough. We're all good enough, but we all have these belief systems that trigger us right in life. And so one of my favorite lines in the song is I'm too much and never enough and a glass half full of the good stuff. So it kind of just wraps up that whole idea of that belief system of not feeling like you are enough, but yet, you know, always seeing the glass half full and trying to push through that belief system on a daily. (laughs) A glass half full of the good stuff. That's going to be my new answer. When people ask, hey, how are you? A glass half full of the good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and very interesting. And Karen, what is the good stuff in your life, would you say? Uh, like if the, you were to quantify it to a liquid in your life, what would you say that oh, the good stuff is? Um, uh, icing. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> icing can be hold liquid. I don't, I don't know if that's right. Icing can be liquid. Chocolate milk? How about that? A, a glass half full of Chocolate milk stuff. I'll take better than a glass full of icing. A ice. glass full What's of icing. Stuff? That sounds great. I want that though right now. <laughs> like right now in the morning. Griffin, what's your half full? What's your glass? What's your good stuff in your half full glass? After listening to that song, uh, whiskey. <laughs> Hell yeah, whiskey. Are you kidding me? Full country whiskey. What's your poison, Crystal? Water. Look at this. A gallon of water a day. Oh, <laughs> oh good for you. That was the best answer. We said whiskey and, and icing. icing. <laughs> you mentioned that uh, idea of we're trained to go, oh, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And I, I want to get to your podcast, but it reminds me there's another podcast that I often listen to that I will tell you about in case you haven't heard it called Terrible Thanks for Asking. Mm. And it's exactly that. It's, uh, you know what? Life is shit sometimes, and it's okay to talk about it when it's shit. So anyway, I'm just going to plug a totally different podcast for a minute before <laughs> yeah. we get onto your podcast. Tell and us about- I'm oh. actually glad you said something, because I'll be I'll be posting a few of my kind of emotional rants on the Breakfast Dish Facebook page. Um, okay, great. And and not, you know, not hiding it or anything, but I, yeah, just kind of text-based post uh, on the podcast page, if that's cool with you, Karen. Like, my life is terrible because my mother says she has gray hair and wants a cup of icing. Yeah, some people say it's more of like an emotional vent, and some would say it's like an acrostic poem. So, like, B <laughs> is for bad at drinking icing, <laughs> R is for really wish I said water instead of whiskey, and then kind of go from there. How poetic. 
Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's good to get it out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I thought that sounded like chaos. Speaking of chaos, tell us nice. about your podcast, Crystal. Nice. That was actually pretty nice good. Nice segue. Thank you. Like Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So my podcast, Question Chaos, I started during the pandemic when I really needed to connect with different people and I wanted to find a way. How can I connect with other people going through similar things in life? And it's very women-based focused entrepreneurs. It started off with that kind of mindset of how to crush the chaos of, you know, working for yourself and, and doing all the things in life. And then it kind of evolved into just talking to anybody who has a story about a struggle and how we overcome those struggles. So really providing listeners with tools on how different people in different situations overcome the battles in their life. And it was just a very inspiring podcast to to have for myself and and then in turn for other people and I just couldn't believe how many people were out there wanting to share their story and and mm-hmm. expose their truth and I found that very empowering. Is there something that either the m- music industry taught you about podcasting or podcasting taught you about the music industry like two very audio focused mediums like did you come into the podcast industry like prepped with all the equipment because you already had that know-how or is there like because like for me I've I've started delving into a lot of audio editing just because we started this podcast in the pandemic and I was like all self-taught it's just like audacity or whatever right but yeah. but like it, what is there any like speaking of like learning new organizational skills. Is there anything you picked up from it? Well, I am very fortunate. My other half, Darren, he owns a recording studio off the Teeth Can Studios. So we have nice. all of the equipment here. So I am fortunate in that regard that music definitely helped with the podcast editing and more so Darren helped with the editing. <laughs> but I did get to... <laughs> Did you say off the Teeth Can? What yeah. is the recording studio? Yeah, off the Teeth Can Studios. You got it. Nice. That's going to be my next one. How are you, Karen? Well, I'm off the TCAN. <laughs> so the TCAN Studios is like 16th Ave, the, the highway, that, the TCAN that runs through through the country. So Darren's from Montreal, and now we're in in, uh, in Calgary, and we live right off the TCAN. So that's where the name came from. I love that. <laughs> hey, what? Oh, I, I keep going back to you saying, I've, I have, I do this, and I do this, and I do this, and I do this. And this might be a hard question, but sure. out of all the things in your melting pot of life and interests, what's not there yet? Ooh. What's a thing that you are Ooh. thinking of doing, another company you'd like to run or a path you'd like to follow that you haven't yet done? Yeah, a few things. So I want to, I would love to host a show on TV. That would just be right up my alley. So that's in the future. I want to write a book and create some more online courses. I kind of do that, but just ex- excel at that a little further. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to delve into all of those. <laughs> what kind of show? What is the book about? And have you already re- made some online courses? Yeah. So the show, I'm not sure exactly. It would be like some like a Kelly Clarkson kind of show or an Ellen kind of show. Oh, I would yeah. love a show like that, you know, where you're just yeah. interviewing people any from any industry, sharing inspiring stories, kind of like my podcast. Crushing Chaos and the artist behind the music kind of combined. Um, just people telling stories, feel good stories to inspire people and vulnerable stories to really expose that life's not always just sunshine and rainbows, but there are ways to, ways to overcome it. And then right. the book would be about persistence, overcoming kind of the same kind of thing. I, I really love talking about vulnerability and leaning into the fear. Um, being a performance coach, I love digging into the mindset and the, the mental aspect behind how we show up for ourselves on a daily. And, and I bring that into performance, like whether you're speaking on stage or whether you're a musician or an actor or anybody that has to kind of step out of their, their element. And I think somehow bringing all those characteristics of the performer mindset and bringing that into how do we show up for ourselves just as people as humans on the daily, I think would be something cool to explore. That's your title, On the Daily. On the Daily. The, no. That book is called On the Daily. You're welcome. Anyway, or, and or the course the talk is... show is called On the Daily. Ooh. Oh, of course. Oh my You're God. Right. Talk- I We're, love it. It. We're making a pitch book right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Karen it's, and I are producers, I guess. <laughs> I love it. It's unfolding. <laughs> Alberta magic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the courses that you teach, because, you know, we're going to have to name those too. So, yeah. So I 
have a fitness company called Live With Love. So I already have um, online courses for for wellness, sound bowl healing. Um, I have a video library of, oh gosh, hundreds of classes every day during the pandemic. I filmed a video class for fitness. Whoa. So there's hundreds of videos up there and I still do classes now and you can buy every, every yeah, day. Ev- Hold every on. Every day. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Oh my God. Sometimes twice. Yeah. I can't do anything every day. <laughs> <laughs> Creature of habit. I don't, I don't even eat. I, I don't even eat the same amount of meals every day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. That's wow. okay. <laughs> I can eat a cup of icing yeah. every day. <laughs> I believe hey, that. That's not if we're talking about like if you know me being 25 is a quarter or a half or a third of my life, we need to talk about your lifespan if you're eating a <laughs> cup of ice in a day. And also, I gotta ask, do you mean a cup in measurement or are you eating a mug of icing a no, day? I mean a half glass. A half a my half. glass is half full. So you get to decide. Some days it's a shot glass, and some days it's a big gulp. Oh, Big, a big, nothing in a big gulp's ever good. Nothing, <laughs> big gulp's so bad Isn't for that you. like a 7-Eleven pop? That's what I think of. Yep. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exa- that's exactly what I remember what it, it was like those, it was those, when I was in school, there was like all those campaigns like against drinking and drugs, but then also there was like some health ones. Like they would bring in like different products and they would have like little mini Ziploc bags of how much sugar yeah. was in each of these things. And there was something crazy that was like, there's the same amount of sugar in a big gulp as there is in a V8 or something like that. Like there was something that was, that always was like the adults up there were like, isn't this crazy? And like all the kids were like, yeah, the big gulp's bad. We for sure picked up on that. <laughs> it's the juice. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's it was true. Right juice, in your childhood. That was actually tough. Yeah. It was right in your childhood that they said some juice has more um, sugar than pop. Yeah. And your dad's like, we're going to stop giving the kid juice. And I'm like, no, we're not. We're not going to. Kids <laughs> <laughs> They're like, <laughs> I, I, I drink a cup of icing every day. We're not stopping the juice. <laughs> right. you, when you married me, you knew I drank my icing. For better or worse, you said, till death do us part and icing. <laughs> Oh, oh my lord. Can you imagine if that was our vows? Is the thing on? I mean, it's been a while. Welcome to the Turf District Podcast, where we huddle up and talk all things Edmonton football team. And we are a part of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. I'm Andrew. I'm Superfan Mike. And I'm Commissioner K. We used to have a different name, much like the team, and now we are relaunching the rebranded podcast starting next week. We will cover player and, as it seems, coach signings. Team news and, you know, like when we play and when we actually have a team name. (laughs) And we will catch up with people from the team, the alumni, the fans, and everyone around the CFL. We might talk a little bit of history, too. Really? Weird. Plus, we'll have new shirts coming, too. Join us every two weeks starting February 2nd, 2021, and every week once we have football back. Find us on Twitter at The Turf District. On Facebook at The Turf District Podcast. And on IG at The Turf District. YouTube Live on Monday nights and the full pod everywhere you find podcasts on Tuesdays. Join the huddle. And remember, you can't catch footballs with your face, and we will absolutely talk to you next week. Speaking of all the things you did during the pandemic, and it's something that's very interesting to us because it sounds like the mission that started it is the very same reason that we started this podcast, The Breakfast Dish, uh, was originally to chat with people who were making a lot of like online, digital, or socially distant art because um, a lot of the artists subscriber base, like specifically for theater, weren't very good at like finding them on like Instagram or, or you know, digitally. Um, so that was kind of the mandate of the podcast and create kind of like a library of of that kind of work that if people were tired of Netflix over this like, you know, two year pandemic, they could go and watch an online play or something like that. Um, but we also wanted to talk about uh, and kind of like this conversation right now, like we want to talk a little bit about the work, but more so the people behind the work. And that's kind of what you did as well with your artist behind the music series right that you hosted on your youtube yeah yeah so it started off as a instagram live and then i just was interviewing people kind of around canada and then that and country genre which then expanded to australia then i ended up doing just around the world and now i have i think over 100 episodes i have 
it hosted on YouTube. And then I have an audio version too on all the streaming platforms that you can listen to, but just really digging into again, that, that fear behind the music and that how people overcome, you know, getting up on stage and being vulnerable. And I was in, uh, the CMI Canada Music Incubator program. And we had this one day where it was a workshop day where everybody had to go on stage and perform and be coached by the coaches that were there. And it was a very moving day for me because I look back and I remember thinking everyone in this program is so talented and so confident and there's no way anyone's feeling fear or, you know, you just sometimes look at artists or people in general and you think, oh, they're so confident or they've got everything together. Like they're amazing. And then they get up there and all of a sudden their wall comes down and all the vulnerability is exposed. And then there's tears coming out and old belief systems shining. And you're just like, whoa, all these people are just like me. And then all of a sudden it felt less scary when you realize that Mm -hmm. everybody we're human and we all have these crazy roller coaster emotions and, and fear. And we're all just trying to push through to the other side. And that was kind of the inspiration behind the artist behind the music is I wanted to have more conversations about the way people are feeling as they're moving through their journey to help other people be reminded that, you know, we're not alone in this feeling. And even though sometimes it can feel like a lonely journey being in the music industry, I think knowing that everybody kind of feels the same way and we're all just doing our best to show up and and get to that stage. (laughs) Do you ever find there's a battle in between, um, like, kind of showing up for yourself and showing your true vulnerability on stage or trying to establish like a stage, I don't know, persona or brand. Like, is there, is there ever a battle of like, ah, this is what I'm like, this is my music me and this is my me me. Or do you try and really like blend those? Yeah, that's a great question. So I like to see the performance version as an elevated version of crystal. So it's still all the same characteristics of me. It's still all my same values and beliefs. And that way I can still show up authentically. And it's just putting on more sparkles or putting on more pink lipstick or, you know, whatever it is as each artist is so different. But for me, those are kind of the things that I like to take, you know, who I am on the daily and how do I elevate that version? How do I make that that version of me bigger and louder and brighter? And, and how do we take up space in the room on a wider scale. Um, that's how I find my performance version of myself. It's interesting to hear you say that idea that we all think that all these artists that get up have all this confidence. And Griffin and I are both theater actors, and we hear that all the time. People will come up to us and go, I don't know how you do what you do. And I watch your videos and go, I, I don't know how you do what you do. Because and 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 then I remember, you know what? It's because it's what we are it's what we're really good at. So we may have, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's weird that we have fear, we have performance anxiety when it's actually what we've been doing all our life, what we've been trained for and what we are an expert as, what we have our 10,000 hours as or whatever. Like I, no one ever gets to stand in a, in a surgery operation theater and look at a surgeon and go, whoa, I could never do that brain surgery, right? Like we, we all have admiration for the people that have the jobs that we can't. Yeah. and do um so yeah why do we still feel this like i'm not good enough when it's a scary thing to do to get up and present yourself as a performer it's bloody scary it is it is scary it's being vulnerable is a scary thing and there's a lot of strength it takes and a lot of personal development and tools that you have to build within yourself to be able to do those things and to show up authentically vulnerable to say things like today I'm not having a good day and that's, that's okay. You know, or today I'm so scared to go on stage, but I'm going to go do it anyway. And there, that's where the strength kicks in, right? Is when you, when you show up when you don't want to, and when you run through the fire, when you're scared of being burned, you know, because the other right. side of that is it feels so good. You know, when you get off stage, when you're done a theater performance, that feeling that you get when yeah. it's over on just, you just feel like the most alive version of who you are and that running towards that feeling, chasing that feeling, I think is what helps us show up through those fears. If that makes sense. I feel that way after I eat a cup half full of ice. <laughs> hey, you should we beat okay. that dead horse yet? <laughs> I just feel like you shouldn't feel like that. Cause you should feel maybe medically questioning. <laughs> 
Maybe medically questionable. <laughs> Maybe I don't feel the most alive after a cup of icing. I was going to say, I would probably be sleeping if I ate a cup of icing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I'd actually feel like I don't ever want to do anything ever again if I ate a cup half full of icing. <laughs> okay, okay, moving past the icing. I know I brought it up again. Griffin was all excited because you opened for an artist that he really likes, and I'm, I'm, I don't know who it is. Lights. Talk about that, Griffin. You opened for lights. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Please talk about that. That's so cool. Yeah, she's great. Um, that was in Edmonton at a festival outside. I remember that day very well. It was pouring rain, pouring rain. Uh, it was an outdoor outdoor festival experience. But then it, right when we had to perform, I think the sun just kind of started coming out again. And it was perfect. It was fun. It was a great day. How does it happen? Like, how do you get, how do you, how are you chosen to open for another artist? what Whose decision is that? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So typically it's a game of who do you know? <laughs> and um, booking agents, production managers, they put together the show typically for any kind of show or festival that's out there. And there's different ways, whether it's applying through kind of an application system or knowing who to send the right email to and you know, constructing the right email with the correct information on, you know, who are you? What do you sound like? What does your show look like? Things like that. But it's just really putting yourself out there. This is a, this is a question I've never gotten to ask anybody. What is the experience of like opening for somebody? Did you, did you and, and, you know, I, it's a little different because I love lights and I love what she does. Is it, uh, do you guys have to like hang out beforehand? Like, is, is there a meeting between you two? Like, uh, do you get to like curate what songs you do based on like what she has prepped? Like, how does how does that relationship work? Yeah, that's um, that's also a great question. No, not so much. It's kind of like you have your set, you do your thing, they do their set, they do their thing. Um, mm. Quite often, yeah, backstage you'll see each other, and sometimes you'll hang out with the other people. Sometimes it's like, no, I'm in my zone. Everyone's like in their zone backstage. Like, it's not always let's all party and like have fun. It's backstage is more let's focus and, you know, get our game faces on so that we can go out and, and pour ourselves out onto that stage. Because if you're backstage pouring yourself out, then you have nothing to give to the other side. Right. So that's nice. something to think about too, is, is the backstage of a performance is probably more intense. I would say than the, the performance itself. I mean, I've had so many different, different shows where it's like you're just kind of shaking out the nerves you got to move through <laughs> move through it before you hop on stage and just really getting that mindset of okay this is what I'm going to do this is what the show's going to look like this is how I'm going to feel getting grounded all all of those kind of things as well hmm. Griffin has just brought up lights as one of his favorite musicians this may be a surprise to some of our listeners but I have a a a uh, big love for Neil Diamond. There's Pitbull. nobody like Neil oh. Diamond. What did you say, Griffin? Pitbull. You also really like Pitbull. I like Pitbull. I love Neil Diamond. I have not changed Sorry. my name to Karen Johnson Pitbull, have I? No. <laughs> if you I'm did, Karen I'd, le I'd leave. That's right. I'd leave See? the family. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm obsessed with Neil Diamond. He is my he is the one that I will fly across the world and see millions and pay millions of dollars to see. Uh and who is that for you? Who's your music? idol your mm. uh I want to open for that person or be that person or I think I have different people for different feelings or emotions okay. like opening I'd love to open for Carrie Underwood um mm -hmm. someone I love watching um Jan Arden Sarah McLaughlin like those two for right. me just like touch all the feels and just inspire me on such a musical artistry level that I don't get from maybe a high energy performance there's just something poetic that I love about watching those two artists. And it just reminds me on why I started my music journey, probably because I listened to them all the time when I was kind of first stepping into my own musical powers. And um, so it just always brings me back to the to the beginning phases, I think. And I think that's why lo both of those just love. Have you ever met Jan Arden? Have I met her? No, I have not met her. I met her once. I have to tell this story really quick. Griffin, my boy, who you see here in the video, only Crystal can see Griffin. Nobody else can. Anyway, he's six foot four. He's a gigantic man. And, and three. He was I'm three, six foot three. Six foot three. He was born Mom. premature. He was two months early. So he was tiny, like just we. And we went to the Calgary Folk Festival when he was, I don't know, 
four weeks old, maybe. And he ha- he hadn't even yet hit five pounds. Like he was a tiny, tiny baby. And Jan Arden's walking somewhere. And my husband, who's like the pushiest, most self-confident person I know, walks up. He goes, Jan, Jan, uh, Griffin here just wanted to tell you that so far in his life, you're his favorite performer. <laughs> and she goes, oh, well, that's great because he's, he's my tiniest fan. She is hilarious. Like she is she a is funny, yeah. funny woman. Oh, I just adore her. I'm about to bug Karen uh, to hit you with a segment that we've really, we really liked and started to introduce in the past few episodes. But before I do, um, as a fellow podcaster, is there a segment or question that you really like asking on, on your podcast? Oh, yeah. If you had one message to share with the world, what would it be? Oh, my God. Um, this one always gets people. Yeah, I think I, I'm an improviser, and I think that the thing I wish the world would think about more often is this rule of theater, improvised theater, which is um, taking care of the, your partner. Like, What do you need mm. when you get on stage with someone? How can I assist you? What do you need? That's what I would say is a message I would say. That and Neil Diamond. Griff? <laughs> That's a good one. I have gotten so many cool opportunities in my life by saying yes to something, even if I didn't know how to do it, mm. and then learned how to do it the moment before I had to go do that thing. <laughs> I don't know how to translate that into Be a, yes. a message to the world. Yeah, I would say opportunities are very valuable, no matter what you think your wheelhouse is. I don't know. Yeah, that's, Something like that. That's great. Because I, th- I do that all the time. I'll say, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And then I'm on Google. Yeah. Okay, how do I do this? Yep. <laughs> exactly. It's it's the question. Whenever you hear the answer, like, yeah. But that's how you <laughs> that's how you learn so many things, right? So, yeah. yeah. Alex Kalman, who is one of our favorite musicians and who composed and sings our intro and outro music, says in our little ditty, our breakfast dish theme, tell me your dreams over bacon and eggs. And this is a morning breakfast dish podcast. So we would like to know the craziest dream you've ever had. We've talked about your dreams for your future and your career, but are you a vivid dreamer? And at any point in your life, have you ever had it like a reoccurring dream or a wacky one that you just can't forget? Um, yeah, I have crazy dreams all the time. I go through phases though. Sometimes I don't remember anything, but, um, when I'm really centered and in tune with myself, I have crazy dreams. I'll wake up every <laughs> in the morning. I'll be like, Oh my God, I just had the craziest dream. Um, do I remember them days later? Not often. So I'm just trying to think of, you know, a good one to, to share with you. You know, when I was a kid, I'll tell you this one. I had this reoccurring dream where I was with my mom and we were running from people and then we would be in this warehouse and there was boxes. Like, I don't know why this is just so clear. I was probably six years old with this dream, but I had it over and over. And every time I had it, it would progress a little bit further and it was just wild. And so we had this, we were running and there was these boxes and these warehouses and and we never got caught, but then all of a sudden I had this dream and my mom disappeared in the, in the last one, the last one I had mom disappeared. And I was just alone in this warehouse with all these boxes. And then shortly after I I never had the dream again. That was the last time. And then my parents got divorced (laughs) and I never had the dream again. (laughs) And that always, did you ever find out what was in the boxes? (laughs) Do you know? Moving boxes. I don't, I don't know. Oh, no. Isn't that wild? <laughs> but that you had intuition. Yeah, I am a pretty intuitive oh, yeah. person. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I do. I still remember that dream as an adult now, and that's one of the only dreams that really stand out as a as a memory because I had it all the time. Wow. It's usually that way. It's the ones we remember the most are some of the first that we had. Yeah. Our first nightmares or stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I yeah. mean, sorry about your parents. Oh, no. Was, it's okay. My, that was, a long, that was a long time ago. That was decades ago. Okay, good. We're going back to age. <laughs> uh, you know what? I will go back to age. And who knows how long I've been saying this old tune, but The Breakfast Dish is part of the Alberta Podcast Network, a locally grown, community supported. The intro music you just heard and the outro music you're about to hear is by Alex Cowman. All graphic design for The Breakfast Dish has been done by Morgan Ermter. Karen, what else is going on this week? 
This Saturday, March 5th, you can see Wickland and Wickland in Stetler, Alberta, at the Jewel Theatre. And the Jewel Theatre is 5010 50th Avenue in Stetler. There are Roots Rock Country Blues Duo. They've opened for Charlie Major, Kim Mitchell. So you should see them March 5th, 7 p.m. in Stetler at the Jewel Theatre. And the following Saturday, you can see Still Crazy, the music of Paul Simon. This is at Festival Place in Sherwood Park, 100 Festival Way. Saturday, March 12th, 7.30 p.m. You can buy tickets in person at Festival Place or by going to Ticketmaster.ca. Crystal McGrath, thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast Dish. Thanks so much, guys. You are both a treat to chat with, so thank you. You too. <laughs> there is, I, I did lie, we do have a second segment that we've usually done to wrap up the show. Uh, Karen mentioned she is a professional improviser, so we're going to ask you a question right now that neither of us ever ever planned. It may or may not relate to the things we talked about, but we're just going to go right now. Here we go, three, two, one. If you had to write a song about an older woman who eats icing out of a glass, what would the title of that song be? The Silver Lining. <laughs> oh, that's, that's yes. okay. Yeah. Wow. There you go. I'm coming soon. Here's the thing. That title was so good that I'm no longer pissed about the medical ramifications of what my mother does. <laughs> I'll work on that for you. <laughs> All right. And oh, as we fade into terrific. the outro music, uh, you can contact Karen's family doctor at 587. This has been The Breakfast Dish.